There it was, blatantly staring back at me, a drink coaster not unlike the one I had given away tonight. My heart sank heavily into my chest as I gathered it from the gutter. There was no mistake. Handwritten on the back of the coaster was the familiarity of my name and phone number glaring back at me. The same one I had passed on to the guy I'd met at the bar earlier tonight. Sure, I'll call you, he'd promised. I stood transfixed at the evidence that proved otherwise. I really thought we connected. Fucking liar, I wanted to scream. My breath became shallow and rapid, and the tightness in my chest was unbearable. The heavy force overshadowed my body, sinking me far beyond the world I walked in. Neither the sudden impact of my knees hitting the ground nor the faint warmth of blood dripping down my legs was anything compared to the sensations brewing in my head. Rushing into my consciousness were obscure snippets of every attempt I'd made while searching for true love. The images were in no particular order and eventually took me to where my sorrow began. The past consumed me with intolerable pain and I felt hollow from my grief. I hate what I've become. Overwhelmed, I fell completely into the muddy depths of my mind. The water beneath me rushed around my legs. The sounds and lights from the city couldn't mute my thoughts. Heavy rain poured onto my unprotected skin, washing the blood from my knees and turning the water around me into a puddle of milky red. I threw the coaster back into the gutter, but it clung to the curb, teasing me further about my failure tonight. My tears blended in with my already soaked face. Dissolving into an ink blot, the coaster drifted away with the remains of my phone number. I watched it way too long lost in the thoughts of another wasted evening searching for love. Like my identity, the square beer mat faded away with the stream of water. No matter how much it enticed me to follow it, I stood my ground and let it go. My sorrow tortured me, immobilized and unable to get back on my feet. Self-pity oozed from me more than the alcohol. I didn't care if anyone was watching. I looked up and saw the alleyway beside the nightclub. The awning would shelter me from the rain while I called a cab. As I pulled my phone from my purse, it fell from my rain-soaked hands. Really? When I went to pick it up, a hand reached down and grabbed my shoulder. I tried to focus and look up, but the blinding light prevented me from seeing what or who it was. My body revolted at the same time with the realization I was most likely being mugged. Ha! I slurred. Nothing of value here. Whoever they were tried to lift me, but I resisted and fought my way free. Still, the light overshadowed us, and all I could see was an outline against the darkness of the alleyway. With all my heart, I wished it to be the guy I'd just been cursing. Maybe I'd been wrong about him after all. Izzy, come on, you got this. It wasn't him. Although the person holding me was a familiar voice and one I longed for. It was the voice of my mother, but that made no sense. No sense at all. It had been so long since I'd felt her touch me. Even though most of me knew this could not be real, there was a small element that couldn't deny her. I allowed myself to fall into the fantasy. My mother's voice was what eventually got me to my feet. The light moved away, and while I couldn't see her face, I felt with certainty that it was somehow the angelic appearance of my mother. No attacker and not the guy from the club at all. The smell of honeysuckle wafted through the air. What gifted me was the sweet, fruity aroma of my mother's favorite flower, and with it came the comfort that my heart needed. Somehow she was here. Now the blinding white light opened up further and filled the alleyway. Now I was sober. My mother and the celestial light surrounding her moved away from me, and with all my heart I wanted to run to her, yet something prevented me. Behind her I could see where the light source was coming from. That can't be real. Ahead of us the glowing golden light ripped open my world and revealed something on the other side. My mother coaxed me with her hands, indicating for me to follow her to the bright line suspended mid-air behind her. I was delusional. 
or I was drunker than I thought. I swung around to see if anyone else was in the alleyway who could confirm that I wasn't going crazy. No one. With hesitation, I awkwardly moved forward. I needed to know if the rift in my reality was real, but more importantly, had my mother returned from the dead? It was not my imagination, it was her standing there, so close I could almost touch her. My mother's sweet smile drew me in further, and I came as close as fear would allow. I could see into the long, slender, glowing light, but my shock halted me. On the other side was a glimpse into something I'd never seen before. Or had I? There was a strange familiarity to the darker place between me and it. How could it be possible to know what was on the other side? My trepidation pulled me back to the real world. My mother's hand reached out one last time, but I pulled away. It's not real, I convinced myself. I was drunk, that's all. My mother turned to me with desperation on her face. Come to me, Izzy, she almost yelled. I couldn't go through with it. My hands instinctively slapped my face to wake me up from this dream. I was right. The portal and my mother were gone. Everything returned to how it was before. My head rang with the pounding of the voices that occupied it. You fool, you should have gone with her. That was your mother. The ceaseless chatter in my mind never stopped. Annoying narrators of my life remind me endlessly of the fuck up I was. I was hurled back to my physical existence when the nightclub door opened and a familiar song blasted its lyrics towards me. The lyrics repeated incessantly, penetrating my mind with the hope of understanding a deeper meaning. Gripping to anything real, I flung away any thoughts of what had just happened and focused on the steady flow of the rain pounding fiercely on the pavement. I couldn't move from the spot, and every part of me yearned for my mother to return, for her to be with me, not dead. I longed to be wrapped in her unconditional love, desperate for her to make all this craziness disappear, although it had been her death that had provoked this madness in me. The haunting of my mother's voice had returned to my head, teasing me with how much I desperately wanted her to hug me again. More tears threatened to resurface, along with how alone I felt. My trademark knee-high boots carried my feet forward, yet I trembled, not from the cold, but from the adrenaline that peaked from imagining my mother. The brimming rage brewed beneath my skin, It was a mixture of anger towards my mother's death and the guy at the club who'd led me on. Fuck him, I vocalized while lighting a cigarette. And fuck you, mum, for for dying. My voice faded at that last word. They're coming for you, the voices chorused. Let them, I answered back. The defiance in my words sprang back at me. It was not the first time I'd imagined my mother or dreamt of faraway lands that didn't exist. It was how I coped. The pulse of the early morning city began to circulate and surround me, bringing my thoughts back to the present. While the first buses of the day were starting their routes and early joggers were beginning their day, I was ending mine. Casting my attention towards the horizon, I threw the remainder of my cigarette on the pavement and scraped my shoe over it. Just then, The heavens spoke to me with a flash of jagged lightning. It forked silently to the unsuspecting ground, igniting the path before me. In a way, it reminded me of what I'd thought I'd seen earlier. A thunderous deep roar from the sky above startled me. I ran faster and crossed the road, dodging the traffic until I found shelter to hail a taxi. Bleak clouds rolled through the turbulent sky. I peered down the barrel of self-reflection where depression consumed me. That would be the next few days taken care of. Nausea rose quickly from my stomach, threatening to escape my throat. A taxi pulled away but sped away quickly when it saw me bent over and emptying the contents of my stomach into the gutter. I was a mess. I knew it, even my family knew it, and the voices constantly reminded me. I just wanted to die. Although, 
it was apparent that life had other plans for me, the willingness to continue my search for true love.